effects of a premature and political withdrawal of U.S. troops. Iraq was the bad war, according to the Obama administration, so we abandoned the strategic gains of the 2008 surge, undoing all the good that had been done. Iraq was lost right before our eyes. Earlier that week, I'd gotten a call from Staff Sergeant David Bellavia, a great friend, a Silver Star guy, Medal of Honor nominee, and general badass. I joked with him that he was a man of ideas, lots of them. Of the 50 he would tell me about, 45 were crazy, 4 implausible, and 1 genius. As he talked, one of those 4 implausible ones began to transform into the single genius. David had a plan for how we could turn all of the helplessness, resignation, and outrage that veterans and patriots were feeling into something positive. Like most audacious actions, the idea was drawn partly from history and partly from the one means that most veterans believed in most, taking direct action. I was committed to David's notion that we form a modern-day Roosevelt's Rough Riders. We'd recruit, raise, and deploy a small force, a Spartan-esque 300, to go help fight ISIS alongside allies on the ground. As I used back channels to connect with key people whose views I respected, warriors that I'd served with, I let them know that it was a crazy idea on the surface, but forming a unit like this would be neither reckless nor rogue. The moment was crying out for a movement of leaders, of men, of warriors. Sure, the actual fight was important, but we would also send a strong signal to all Americans. We could rekindle the doused fighting spirit that all Americans possess. Being on Fox News could serve as a bully pulpit. I had some connections. What did they think? I also had a track record for unconventional approaches. I'd taken a similarly audacious step back in July of 2005. I'd completed my year-long deployment to Guantanamo Bay and was working as a market analyst on Wall Street. I read a story about a suicide bombing in Baghdad that had killed 27. 18 of the victims were kids under 13. One 24-year-old American soldier also paid the ultimate price. As I sat at my comfy desk near the trading floor, I was inundated that day with televised images of the escalating violence. I wasn't fatigued by it. I was motivated. I reached out to one of my few military connections on a long shot, but a good one. He was a company commander in the legendary Rakassans, the 187th Infantry Regiment of the 101st Airborne Division. He had trained me at infantry school, and now, as he emailed me back almost immediately, he needed a new second platoon leader. I wanted to be his man. We had to navigate through some serious Pentagon red tape, but within three months, I'd punched my ticket to Fort Campbell, trained up with my platoon in Kuwait, and was on to Baghdad, Iraq, where we served for four months before being moved up to Samara. Our unit was in Samara when Al-Qaeda blew up the Golden Dome, complicating our efforts to dismantle the insurgency, defeat the enemy, and bring our boys home. Like so many others, our unit experienced the whole gamut, conducting foot patrols and kicking down doors, working with city leaders, enduring firefights, and receiving death threats. Our warriors did great things on that foreign soil, as well as in Afghanistan where I was an instructor. Like the real 1% of my generation, those who wore our nation's uniform, I saw a lot of things, but I also knew that there was a much wider world beyond our platoon. There were other warriors, shadow warriors, who were the 1% of the 1%, working in the dead of night to strike fear and death into our enemies. Special operators. As the years have gone by, I've learned a lot more about who they are, as we all learned their stories of gallantry and heroism. Every warrior plays their part, from rank-and-file line units like mine, to special operators, to our eyes in the sky and ships in the sea. As you probably have figured out, the 2014 Rough Riders Brigade never formed. Hearts were willing and spirits were strong, but that wasn't enough to overcome the overwhelming inertia that had so many mired in the bureaucratic bog. We tried hard, but it wasn't to be. Frankly, just trying was therapeutic, if insufficient. Fast forward to my time at Fox News. I've been blessed with a platform to share my Army background and stories of my service but I always knew that there were so many others who didn't have that opportunity. 
I was and remain enormously grateful that I could focus on different aspects.